10 NHL players with super shady backgrounds. Hey guys, welcome back to Hockey Hub. Number 10. Gary Bettman while he keeps his nose relatively clean in most aspects of his life, it can be argued that Gary Bettman is in dire need of some ethical cleansing. While he has done some great things to advance the sport and help increase the revenue for both players and owners, Bettman has overextended the league somewhat into some questionable markets. Self-serving and greedy to stamp his legacy has caused the relocation of one and possibly two franchises in three years. Contrary to what the fans in Winnipeg may think, franchise relocation is not good for the growth of the game. There have also been far too many examples of what I call ruling of convenience. These would be on the fly adjustments to the rules that are in place. Sticking Brendan Shanahan in his current position may take the spotlight off Batman, but everyone knows who Sheriff Brendan answers to. Hello, Vancouver! I admire the emotion and the passion. Number 9. Bob Goodenow while never indicated for anything more sinister than being a stubborn attorney and agent, Bob Goodino took over the NHLPA in 1992 and teamed with Gary Bettman to send the NHL to three work stoppages over the next 13 years. Included in his reign as the player's representative was the complete loss of the 2004-2005 season, a 103-day lockout in 1994 and a 10-day strike in his first few months on the job. It could certainly be argued that Goodino stood up for the players when they needed him to. However, his personal agenda and storied personal distance for Gary Bettman and the NHL ownership did the NHLPA no favors and lost pay and lost play. Number 8. Billy Tibets Most people have heard the Billy Tibet story by now, but if you haven't, here's a summary. He stole Vanilla Ice's identity and ruined his rapping career. Okay, that's not true, but the resemblance is pure magic. Tibets was a talented player who had his career derailed because he couldn't keep himself out of legal trouble. He served the better part of three and a half years in jail for a probation violation from an initial statutory rape charge. After his time in prison, Tibets would eventually find his way to the NHL and was signed by the Pittsburgh Penguins. After bouncing up and down from NHL to AHL, Tibets was traded and then released by the Philadelphia Flyers. What had the potential to be a story of redemption and second chances turned out to be a cautionary tale of what happens to a talented head case that can't stay out of his own way. Trying to rip the helmet off of Avery. Tibbets is one strong guy. Number 7. Bill Wirtz Nothing shows how much fans appreciate your efforts more than when they boo your memorial at the home opener following your passing. The Chicago Blackhawk faithful left no doubt about their feelings for William Dollar Bill Wirtz at the 2007-2008 game. The longtime president and chairman of the storied Chicago franchise, Wirtz was a shrewd businessman noted for taking Chicago home games off of local television, a disservice to season ticket holders, he claimed, and firing coach and former player Bill Ray by having a note slipped under his apartment door on Christmas Eve. Ethically vacant and morally destitute. Number 6. Len Barry Len Barry made a brief career for himself in the NHL as a right-handed center, drafted by Edmonton in 1988. Maybe the Oilers were thinking they could replace another center they had just traded to Los Angeles that year. Hmm. After a brief and unspectacular career that saw Barry appear in only 184 games, he made a good bit of money as a real estate and resort developer in British Columbia. In fact, Barry's portfolio improved so significantly that he was actually approved as a co-owner of the Tampa Bay Lightning for a couple of years in 2008 to 2010. The problem with Barry was that he was developing his Bear Mountain Resort on historic native sites and on environmentally sensitive areas. Classy. He has since had his financial records seized by the British Columbia Attorney General's office. Not good. The Bellagio Hotel and Casino has filed a $2 million claim against Barry earlier this year as well. Uh oh. Long time. Matthew <laughs> Barnaby and Barry flailing away at each other. Number 5. Bill Dwyer. Big Bill Dwyer was a bootlegger and gangster who used his chosen vocation to fund the purchases of the Hamilton Tigers and secretly the Pittsburgh Pirates. Dwyer moved Hamilton to New York and renamed them the Americans. He then proceeded to literally try to fix games with gold judges at home games. The US government cracked down on Dwyer, winning a huge court case against him and draining his finances. Dwyer, left with the Americans as his only asset, borrowed $20,000 from his coach Red Dutton and promptly lost it at a craps game. Number 4. Mike Danton the case of Mike Danton is almost as well documented as Billy Tibet's, with a decisively darker twist. Danton was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder for hiring a hitman to kill his agent David Frost. After serving just over five years in prison, Danton was released and eventually claimed that the hitman was intended for his estranged father. Regardless of the target, hiring somebody to kill a significant person in your life seems fairly indicative of some major issues. Number 3. John Ziegler 
John Ziegler accomplished some great things during his time as the fourth president of the NHL. He mandated that all players must wear helmets, except the grandfathered few, presided over the NHL-WHA merger that helped expand the NHL and was part of the Soviet integration into North American hockey. It could be argued that Ziegler just happened to be around for those last two because his tenure was also riddled with inconsistencies and ineptitude. His end as president came about amidst the Allen Eagleson scandal. It was famously pointed out to him by Carl Brewer, attorney for Bobby Orr, that the NHL and Major League Baseball had started their pension programs in 1947. While the MLB pension was stocked with cash totaling $500 million, the NHL boasted roughly $31.9 million. Number 2. Peter Pocklington when he isn't filling in as a member of the Bee Gees cover band, Peter Pocklington is busy with his hand in many failed financial ventures. Not surprisingly, many of those failures are the result of unscrupulous business partners and no fault of Pocklington, according to him. We all know him as the owner of the Edmonton Oilers, who helped merge the WHA with the NHL in 1979, leveraging young star Wayne Gretzky to join the larger league. Pocklington would enjoy the glory years in Edmonton with the Stanley Cup runs of the young Oilers, but would end up selling off the team piece by piece, starting with Gretzky in 1980. Pocklington would lose the Oilers in the mid-1990s after threatening to move the franchise because of financial losses. Pocklington would eventually file for bankruptcy under shady circumstances and be placed under house arrest. He's currently in the midst of securities fraud claimed from the Arizona Corporation Commission for mining venture in Arizona. Built them now for nine years and I think it'll do another nine or ten. Just one other question, can you keep that coach behind the bench another year? Number 1. Rick Tockett on the ice, Rick Tockett was known for his rough and tumble play, feisty disposition, and legendary toughness. Off the ice, Tockett is now remembered as a mastermind of an interstate gambling ring. What is confusing about the whole case, which named Janet Gretzky, the great wife, as a better but not Wayne, is that after all of the investigation by local authorities, the FBI, and the NHL, Tockett's guilty plea resulted in two years probation. So for all the splashy headlines and significant charges that the case produced, Tockett was essentially allowed to return to the NHL. This past December, Tockett had over $18,000 cash seized as he added into the Bahamas. Stay shady, Rick. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it, hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.